All right, guys, so I think that, you know, like I said, this is our residential live webinar. Um, we have our superstar residential live director, Mr. Hensley, here with us, and he will be uh, in the hot seat ask, answering all the questions that you guys have. You know, like I always said, if you have an easy question, please address it to me. If it's a difficult question, please to Mr. Hensley. Uh, and then we also have Ms. Karn, uh, who will be helping us, not only answering questions, but keeping us in line. Uh, so we're very excited and let's start. I mean, we have a lot of people in, in the panel now. So Mr. Mr. Hensley, uh, if you want to start about um, Hebron and residential life and what we stand for, that would be ideal. Absolutely. Um, our mission here at Hebron is to, uh, to support students in reaching their highest potential of mind, body, and spirit. And um, to do that, we, we really um, pursue a philosophy of, of balance. And it's a balance of uh, supports and structures that we, we provide and any good residential system provides. And also the freedom to, to develop and mature and become the, the young adults that we, we really wanna see our, our students thrive and uh, turn into. So um, that's really our guiding philosophy. Um, when students need support in a particular way, we provide it. When students are mastering something, a personal life skill, they're getting themselves out of bed, they've got good relationships with their peers, they're on top of their studies, they have a lot of freedom to enjoy and really start to experience the kinds of things that they're gonna be experiencing in college. So um, that is sort of the course in the transition. And um, the uh, journey that we want our students to go on, so. Mr. Hensley, what, what brought you to working in boarding schools? What, what's so appealing to you about residential life in general? Yeah, well, it's fun, first of all. <laughs> um, I, I really enjoy the activities that we get to do on evenings and weekends. Uh, and whether that's just uh, hanging out in the dorm a little bit, uh, I play video games. Uh, so I'm always, I'm always down to, to play a little FIFA with students and show them who's boss. Um, and then I also like to take that out into the real world. Uh, and I know that Mr. Nunez also enjoys a good pickup listen, soccer game. Listen to me. I am okay at uh, football, I'm okay at soccer, but I am excellent at FIFA, excellent. Uh, uh, so gonna, I will challenge We'll be testing anybody. that out and we'll see if any of the students can give us a run for the money <laughs> this year. No, uh, But I, I really just li love living in a community uh, where there's a lot of things going on and I particularly enjoy it being an academically centered community. So one of the really beautiful things about residential learning communities is that they're might be a lot of stuff going on, but there's a singular focus, and that is becoming academically successful and also becoming interpersonally and um, like developing the socio emotional skills that are just really key to success as well. And you can go to high school in a, as, as a day student, and you can go. Well, I think you actually, you get a certain privilege when you're a day student at a boarding school, but uh, you can go to your local high school, you can go to a really nice prep school that's a day school, and you're not going to get the same kind of socio-emotional development that you're going to get in a boarding school where you are living in community with other people and so many different types of people and people with different perspectives, different ways of seeing things, you're going to interact with them, you might even have a little bit of conflict with them, but then you're gonna find synergies with them. And there's just this really wonderful thing that happens as we all um, inhabit the space together and share and grow together. So I love it. I couldn't agree more, Mr. Hensley. I, your, your comment makes me think about how like, in particular, one of the things that makes Hebron unique is just how many different places our students come from and how that residential life experience. I mean, I think, Mr. Williams, we represent what? Over 20 different countries in our student yeah, 26 countries. I think that, you know, it's, it's, I always tell the kids that for me, the most difficult part of working at Hebron is I wish I can go back in time. You know, I wish I can be young again. 
I think that, um, you know, when I went to boarding school, it was truly, you know, it was the, the best time of my life. It has all been downhill from there. But uh, um, no, it hasn't. It, no, no, it has not. But it, it, it's something that at, a, at, at that particular time in life, when you're 16, you're 17, you're making friendships for life and, and you are trying different hobbies. It's, it's really special. Um, I, before we go into the next um, question, I, I wanted to remind everybody that if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A button in, in, this, in, in the Zoom tools and ask us any questions. We, we will leave the Q&A for the end. But if, as we talk, if you have any kind of questions, you can just write them down there and we'll make sure to, to answer them all. Um, you know, I think on that to segue from that kind of topic, a very important part of, of, of residential life, Mr. Hensley, is, is the day-to-day, -day, you know, and, and a, lot of, a lot of kids are like, what, what does that look like? What, you know, what does a normal day at Hebron looks like? Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about that and kind of give you some, maybe some role-playing. Sure thing, sure thing. So, um... I'll, I'll jump back. I'll jump back to my high school days for a minute. You've re, you've relived yours very briefly here. I'll, I'll jump back. Um, and uh, as a Hebron student, as a as a lumberjack, I am uh, I'm waking up in the morning probably around seven a.m. Uh, I'm going through my morning routine um, because uh, I I know what it takes to uh, take care of myself. Good hygiene. I've had a good night a night of sleep because I went to sleep the night before at lights out time. Maybe I stayed up a little bit later uh, on, on late lights because I had a little bit more work to do. Um, and I had talked to my, uh, my dorm faculty member about that. But I got a good night of sleep. I get up around 7 a.m., get ready for the day. I uh, make sure I'm looking good, neat, but I don't have to be particularly overdressed. Very com comfortable but neat is really kind of the, the guiding principle behind our dress code. And I know there've been a lot of questions um, coming in from families about that. Uh, so I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. I've got my stuff ready for the day and I'm going to head to the dining hall uh, and uh, Sage Dining Services is going to have a really nice hot breakfast out there for me. Uh, and there'll be a whole bunch of options. There's always going to be, you know, some kind of fruit uh, or berry out there. There's going to be something like uh, French toast or waffles, maybe in the waffle machine. Miss Carton, you're, you're muted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I just got really excited. Don't forget Gail's baked goods um, in the morning. Fresh baked goods, right? You know, fresh baked muffins. <laughs> they are good. They're dangerously good. We're all going to have our favorite things there. Uh, so the wonderful selection of things to, to get some nourishment for the day. And then I'm going to head on from uh, the dining hall here and the uh, Sturt dormitory building on the main floor. And I'm going to head, uh, head over maybe to the, to the school building with, uh, with our beautiful bell tower centrally on campus uh, for our humanities class. And uh, that'll be the start of my academic day. Um, and uh, some mornings, I may, we might have a community meeting uh, where we all gather in, uh, in the chapel here on campus. And uh, we have community programming and activities that can be student run. There's going to be all sorts of things um, from our, our student life department. Um, and, uh, and we'll get together as a community in that way. And uh, some mornings we might have, uh, like a Wednesday morning, we might have a Wellness Wednesday uh, where we talk about important socio-emotional skills and, and health and good relationships and things like that. So um, lots of different things that might be going on in the mornings get into the academic day, get to take advantage of Sage one more time at lunch, which is great, uh, and then head into my afternoon activities. And uh, most, so we're divided into trimesters, and most, probably two of the three trimesters, if not three of the three, I'm a kind of an athletic guy. I like to do three out of three athletics. Uh, some folks are a little bit more uh, into the performing arts, for example and might do two out of three seasons as an athlete and spend another season working on a performing art show. And, um, and so uh, I'll have my afternoon activities uh, after school and uh, might be stopping off at my dorm real quick to get changed, 
but I need, I got to get to practice. Want to impress coach. Want to make the starting lineup for the, uh, for the game on Saturday. Some games on Wednesdays as well. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then after practice, I'm pretty tired, but I get over to the dining hall cause I'm also starving. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, after a good meal, I get a little bit of time to decompress back in my dormitory uh, before study hall begins in the evening. Um, and at study hall time, uh, depending on how much support I need, remember how I mentioned before, balance of support and freedom, depending on how much support I need academically, uh, I may be going to a structured study hall where we have academic support uh, and staff there to, to help students with their, their work uh, a little bit more tightly supervised, making sure that you're on task, uh, helping you to stay organized and on top of what you need to do, uh, that extra little touch. Or I may be uh, doing study hall in my dorm. Uh, my door's open, my light's on. Uh, I am staying as focused as I can um, on my work. Uh, things are quiet in the dorms. Uh, and uh, there, might be a, there might be a low, a low buzz of activity. I can listen to music on my headphones if I want, um, but I try to get my work done. And I might have actually gotten a start on my work earlier in the day too during my free block. But if I'm being honest with myself, I was probably finishing homework for class after that free block, but we won't tell my teachers that. Um, so um, study hall runs in the evenings from, uh, for senior division students, those are our 10th through uh, 12th graders and PG. Uh, from uh, 7.30 to 9.30. And it's a little bit shorter for our junior division students uh, so long as they've gotten their work done uh, from 7.30 to 9. And then in the evening, if I'm a junior division student, I may have a little bit of an opportunity after my study hall ends at 9 to spend some time in a common room, decompress a little bit from my day before I need to be back on my dorm for 930. Again, this is for junior division students, our sixth and ninth graders. Uh, and then heading towards bed, lights are going down on the hall, everyone's settling in around 10 for junior division. It's a little bit later for our senior division students. Again, they may have a little bit more work. Naturally, biologically, their sleep schedules are a little bit different. Uh, so they have a, a little bit more time in the evenings, 10 and 11 for their, um, for their evenings. Uh, so by about 11, I'm settled in. The dorm's settled in. It's nice and quiet. My dorm faculty member might be wandering down the hall, making sure that we're, we're all heading in the right direction, saying good night. And uh, that's, uh, that's my day. Was that, was that too much? Was that? I, don't know. I mean, I think it's something. I mean, it's a busy it, day. No, it is, it is. But I, it's I, a I'm, lot of fun. I've been and, telling everybody that. I think that the important part for, for the day-to-day -day is that the idea of balance. I mean, I think you cover it quite well. Um, maybe for a lot of our students, they're not used to that. The fact that you can go to classes, you can go to athletic events, you can socialize, you can do study hall all in the same place. Um, you know, you can go from your room to mountain bike practice in like, I don't know, four minutes. You can go from your room to hockey practice in like two minutes. So everything is on campus and this idea of balance and through, through your day is very important. And um, you make the best of your, your time and your energy that way as well. Absolutely. I mean, I think that on, on this note, I think people are asking, okay, that's, that's really structured. We really like it. We, we enjoy the idea of being very tired every day at the end of the day. You know, we want to maybe keep not, the kids. Maybe not every day. No, it's but good. It's, we want the kids to be as busy as possible. You know, I think it's so much fun when you're 15 to, to be doing all kinds of different activities, some arts, some athletics. What about the weekends, Ms. Carney? What about in the weekends? What, what do you have to do about yeah. that? Weekends are awesome. And I, I was actually, I was anticipating you asking me this question, Mr. Nunez, and I was thinking about it, and I was like, man, we have this structure to our weekdays that's pretty, there's a, a certain amount of routine there. Um, our weekends, there's no such thing as a typical weekend, right? Every weekend's a little different. Um, we, we aim to offer a wide variety of activities every weekend. We make sure that there are activities that appeal to students 
who are athletically focused, who are artistically focused, who really want to go see, um, you know, American cultural events or, or other sort of artistic cultural events. Um, there's uh, a lot of activities that embrace, embrace our location. Things like ice climbing in the winter or surfing in the fall or in the spring. Um, uh, we also like really try to uh, engage students in this planning process as much as possible. So students, students are asked for their opinions frequently. There are student leadership opportunities for those who want to help design weekend activities. And anybody is welcome to always welcome to go to Mr. Hensley's office, which is this big comfy office on the first floor of the main school building. Hang out, grab a piece of candy, give him some ideas around what activities you want to see. And for I, example, I want all, all your ideas, all your all ideas. ideas. And if I'm not there, all Write them up on my board. And often the best activities are the ones led by other students, right? Um, so yeah, we offer all these fancy, cool activities like, like surfing, which requires equipment and what have you. I mentioned surfing a few minutes ago. Um, but, but sometimes the best activities are the things that are led by our students. So we're, you know, we have what, over 20 miles of trails right here on campus and uh, they end, they, at the terminal end, we have Marshall Pond. And I'm thinking of Fred last year, who was like, I just love fishing. I want to teach everybody how to fish. And that became like a pretty regular occurrence where walks down to Marshall Pond to learn how to fish with Fred. Um, so and Fred's one of our student leaders this year. Fred's one of our student leaders this year. So it's really about um, combining what we know from best practice of, of different kinds of activities and what students are particularly interested in this year. We do stuff on campus, we do stuff off campus. We do offer um, periodic shopping trips um, for if you need to refill, say like get some snack, extra snacks for your room. Um, maybe you want toilet, specific toiletries, um, but often for that stuff, Amazon is the best anyway. Um, and then the other thing I would mention there is, uh, on the weekend piece um, uh, is that we do make sure to offer activities for different, that appeal to different age groups as well. So we make sure that our youngest students, like our, we have boarders as young as sixth grade and as old as postgraduates. We wanna make sure that we have activities that appeal to the youngest students and to the oldest students as well. Um, gosh. And be, and these, these activities range in scale from massive field days and um, uh, concert kinds of things, whether that be a student group putting on a concert or uh, an open mic night, something that requires a lot of organization planning and student involvement and adult involvement making habit to really, really low key, just fun things on the dorms. And, and this is actually some of the stuff that makes residential life um, really wonderful and really makes it a family environment. So, uh, you know, our, we'll have our, our dorm faculty members, sometimes they'll, they'll have their doors open and they'll, they'll be baking brownies for their students uh, or, or cookies and, and sharing those out on the hall. Absolutely. Um, Good point. I, when I'm on duty, and some, often when I'm not on duty, my door is like wide open. People are coming in, playing with my dog, who thank you to all of you who've been patient as my dog has paced back and forth behind me throughout this, this webinar. Um, that, I think that family <laughs> environment is really important to mention. Thanks, Mr. Hensley. And, and I think, um, you know, you mentioned it, which is, to me, the cornerstone of, of, of this experience to many students, which is you have the opportunity to do the things that you love to do, but you also have the opportunity to do completely new things, things that you don't have at home. And this is a, a, a tremendous time in your life for, to, to, to get out of your comfort zone and meet new people, try new hobbies, do new sports. And, and develop it, new skills as well. And, and those moments, I tell you, are the moments that will stay with you for the rest of your life. When you push yourself out of your comfort zone. Uh, is that they are amazing, uh, and they they are there are opportunities for you to do that daily at Hebrew Academy. So I think that that's something to 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 remind yourself that you know this is a great time to, like I said, get out of your comfort zone. Mr. Nunez just gave a great sort of pro tip on how to be how to make the most out of your boarding experience. Mr. Hensley, do you have any thoughts on other things that you'd recommend to somebody who's new to the boarding experience? How do they get the most out of it? Hmm. That's a good question because I would definitely agree with Mr. Nunez on trying to challenge yourself to try new things and to meet new people. I think one of the really, really awesome things that I've seen over the years in my experience working with residential programs are 
are the unexpected friendships that develop uh, and that are lasting. I caught up with a, an alumnus at a school I worked at um, not too long ago, and he keeps up with friends that range the world. Uh, and they're really supportive of each other and they cheer on each other's successes. Uh, and uh, they've become lifelong friends. Um, and not all of them expected to be friends um, when, when they first got to school. Uh, so trying new things, meeting new people, stepping outside your comfort zone while still finding places to be comfortable, right? Um, again, balance. Um, but, and, and I guess the other, the other big thing is to talk to the adults. I think it's really easy when you're a young person, I remember being a teenager myself, not to engage with adults, but the, one of the really great things about a community like Hebron is all of us are here for you all. We want to talk to you all. You all make our day when you, when you all talk to us uh, and you tell us what's going on in your life uh, or you just want to chat about, uh, I don't know, the, the latest Netflix series um, or when we're able to, to help mentor and guide or um, make an activity happen. That's, that's my big thing. That's why I do what I do. I love to work with students to make things happen. So don't be afraid uh, to ask a teacher for extra help, uh, to share what's going on in your life. Just strike up conversation. Um, Can I add to that, Mr. Hensley? I would say if you're brand new to boarding, be vulnerable too with your peers around what you don't know how to do. For example, let's say this is your first time sort of taking care of your own laundry. No one's gonna judge you if you say, can somebody help show me how to do laundry the first time? Um, so those self-advocacy skills where you say, here's what I need are really, really helpful um, for you to get the most out of your experience, for us to know how to support you, but also for your peers to get to know you. Um, I think one of the cool things about Hebron is I think we have a culture here where it's okay not to be perfect at, like, at, at everything, to try new things that might be outside your comfort zone, as Mr. Nunez said. So if it's something new to you, do you need help? Ask for help. I think the tip that I will give will be more, uh, you know, people are really sometimes concerned about their room. Where are they going to be at? Which you, who, where is my room? How big is it? Like, how, how big is the room? And sometimes, you know, like I've been through boarding school uh, and the, I will say the least, the, the, the space where you spend the least amount of time is your room. So, if something a goal should be for you to to be around campus and stuff but out of my experience i will say and this is something i have shared with with many students is you do not want the the biggest room in the dorm you want to be friends with the kid with the biggest room you know the biggest room becomes like it's hard to study there because you have to kick everybody out everybody wants to be there everybody's hanging out so it's always fun to be friends with that guy or that girl and then and then just leave to do your homework but um that is my just super pro tip uh, when you start thinking about rooms all righty um i'm wondering if we should uh dive into a few of these questions is that okay mr nunez sure and then and like i reminded to everybody if you have questions write them in the q a this is your time to to get you know, all the answer from, from Mr. Hensley particularly. So there's a great question in here about the junior division. Um, and the question is, uh, is the junior division sixth to eighth grades or sixth to ninth grades? And our, the way we define junior division in a residential setting is sixth through ninth grades. That said, ninth grade is sort of an interesting year. Here at Hebron, it's pretty much, it's, it's, it's um, you get to both be a leader within the junior division, but academically you're part of the senior division and in that sense, you, um, it's, it's really, first of all, developmentally appropriate, but also a great opportunity for freshmen who are normally like low man on the totem pole at high schools, right? They get to be sort of um, leaders within that community. And we, we do have different um, structures for our ninth graders specifically within the junior division, um, uh, for example, around study hall and that kind of stuff. 
Um, actually, speaking of which, Mr. Hensley, what are, what are some of the ways in which, I mean, broadly speaking, residential life might differ by division, if you're in the junior division or the senior division? Uh, I think this gets to a couple questions that have been asked in the Q&A. So um, there are some differentiated expectations around um, electronics. So there's a question in the Q&A about um, electronics management, iPhones, iPads, electronic devices. So as, as a standard for our junior division students to support them where they are, uh, we do collect uh, electronics and we store them in a nice charging cabinet, make sure they're ready for the next day um, at nighttime. So, uh, as students are still developing the executive functioning skills required to manage those devices, to learn the lessons about putting them away uh, for, for the nighttime, moving into night shift, um, we, we do provide that support as a baseline structure. Now, students who are having trouble with their electronics usage, we really like to engage this as part of a dialogue uh, where possible. So when we engage a conversation with a student who need some support uh, with managing uh, what's going on in their life, or they're having some trouble academically. Uh, often, often I would say, one of the things that comes up is electronics management, uh, and that's why we see the question here. And so one of the, the first things we'll talk to the student is, how are we gonna work together to manage this? And, and a number of students over the years uh, will opt in, uh, uh, senior division students uh, will opt in uh, to in electronics management where they, they partner with the dorm faculty to help them manage their electronics in, um, in the evenings. Uh, so um, that's one of the things that we do. It's a support that is sometimes put into place for senior division students and it's a standard for our junior division. Uh, other questions, um, questions around breakfast. Uh, it depends. Um, on weekdays, am I allowed to skip breakfast? It depends. We, we want you to eat. We want you to get a good start to the day. Our junior division students are required to go to breakfast. Uh, and our senior division students have a little bit more freedom or options in that regard. Um, and we have, um, I believe for our, uh, Ms. Carton, I might need an assist here with our seniors and PGs. Don't we have a, do we have a special option? So, uh, so, so um, for senior division students, you might have, if, if and on, on a day you have first period free, we even offer a later breakfast for those senior division students. That's, that's not just seniors and PGs, it's like 10th grade and up, actually ninth grade and up. If you have first period free, you get a little bit of a sleep in. Um, and, uh, and that's a great example actually of where ninth grade is a little bit of that flex, right? Where ninth graders would be required to go to breakfast, but because they might have free periods where sixth through eighth graders don't generally don't have free periods, um, they might have a, a sleep in one day. And, and something to, to also differentiate is the difference between weekdays and weekends, right? In the weekends, the breakfast is a brunch, so it's a little bit later, so you get to sleep in and, and, and be able to, to eat a really great brunch and brunch and or lunch if you are like me, you know, and kind of double down on the options there. Oh, yeah. I sit at brunch for like two, all two, the full two hours and just eat the whole time. <laughs> Uh, um, sorry, go ahead, Mr. Nunez. I was going to say, we have a lot of questions here and, and all kinds. So we're going to start a little bit with, is there a, a space for, for storage? Uh, any place for beans or enough space under beds? Apparently, Sean has a lot of, a lot of things bringing in. So um, but what do you have to say about that, Mr. Hensley? There's a place for, for kids to store? Um, sure. So a standard room set of furnishings will include um, a bed. Most of our rooms are double, so there'll, there'll be two sets of everything. So you'll have a bed. Uh, some of our beds, it depends on where you are, what set of furniture you have, uh, are adjustable up and down, and most are able to loft, that is to bunk the beds, depending on how roommates want to configure the room, what they agree upon at the beginning of the year. We do ask for those of you who are eager to do that now, and are eager to reshape your room, we do ask that you engage faculty and you ask before moving furniture and especially before lofting, move, bunking beds, uh, because we wanna make sure that that's done safely uh, and securely. Uh, so you can always, uh, if that is something that you end up wanting to do, you can ask your dorm faculty member, but every room comes with a bed, a mattress. It comes with uh, a set of drawers generally around four to five drawers per student. It depends on the, the configuration, specific configuration of the furniture. 
Uh, and every student will have a desk at which to do work. Uh, the desks generally have hutches. They have a chair for the desk. The desk has drawers, uh, generally three drawers, um, uh, much like an office desk uh, that you would see in, in many a workplace uh, and a, a standard across many colleges and boarding schools. And then uh, every student will either have a closet or a wardrobe or an armoire uh, where they mm -hmm. can store hanging, hanging things. Uh, so that's the standard set of furniture. Um, I, I see some questions about exact room configurations and things like that. Um, I wish we could have a full index of, of photos for everyone about every room. We do not, uh, and our rooms do vary. Uh, so um, some rooms are a little bit smaller in some ways and larger in other ways. And, um, and the closet width um, can vary too, based on where you are. Um, but um, we really do do our best to make sure students' belongings are able to be stored um, and um, really my rule of thumb for coming is to think about what you want to leave with, right? So, um, and I remember this myself going to, to residential programs as, as a, I wanted to bring so much stuff. Um, <laughs> and then leaving, I very, like when I was packing up to leave, I very much regretted that. Um, so we provide a lot here um, and, um, Students will also have the opportunity once they're here to acquire things, to order things through Amazon, to pick things up on, on weekend trips. So um, I tend to encourage students to get here, talk to their roommate, and then look to see what other things they might, they might go for. Um, we do allow other furnishings that are in good repair. So if a student wants to pick up an extra bookshelf, because that's they have a book collection that they really, you're welcome to pick that up in the evenings and set that up. Uh, if, there's, if there's room or you reconfigure your room and make a little bit more space by lofting the beds and you want to get, um, I believe we, we do allow like a, a beanbag chair that's in good repair or a papazon uh, sort of thing. And, and some students like to, to bring that sort of thing in. But really my strong encouragement is to get here, talk to your roommate, plan it out together. Uh, and decide what kind of space you want to have um, before bringing too much. Um, but there is a lot of freedom and opportunity in that regard. There are a number of questions about asking about when do people find out about their roommates? Mr. Hensley. Ah, so we are actively working on the roommate, uh, the roommate scheme. We put a lot of thought into all of this. Uh, we really our guiding ethos is really to try to uh, build a greater community uh, and encourage people to engage with others. So um, we are actively working on that. It's a shifting landscape a little bit still, uh, but we will um, hopefully be reaching out in, in the week or so before school uh, to both introduce uh, you all to your dorm faculty members uh, as well as uh, to your roommates so you all can do a little bit of collaboration ahead of time. There's a, there's a great question here about what if I miss home? You know, what if, um, you know, those first few days sometimes can be difficult. It's a new school, new teachers, you know, new, you're like, oh, Mr. Hensley is pretty cool, but I don't feel about, I, I, I'm still struggling with the transition. What kind of support, what kind of, um, things can those kids look, for, to, look forward to? What kind, of, um, what kind of advice do you have for them too? So, Ms. Carton, unless you wanna take this one, we have a whole range of, of various supports for students uh, and folks who they can look to connect with. A primary one's gonna be their advisor. Now their advisor uh, is founded sort of in the, the academic day uh, in, um, we, we've assigned advisors by grade level, um, and it's a small group. They'll meet continuously throughout the year. You're gonna meet early on and often in the first few days, and that'll be a wonderful opportunity um, to talk about those sorts of things and with a group of people who are probably experiencing the same thing. And then there's a whole range of other supports, right? You're gonna have probably about, you're gonna have about four dorm faculty members who you regularly interact with 
So if you don't necessarily have the strongest connection with one, but another, you just like feel the warm and inviting, like this is someone I click with, that's someone you might be able to talk to. If, if you're really feeling it um, or and you don't know who to, we also have all sorts of health and uh, wellness and mental health supports here on campus. We've got counselors who are experienced in working with students who are experiencing those exact things. Uh, homesickness is common, but it often goes away super quickly as you get into the routine of things. Uh, and we have all sorts of people here who are here to help you with that. Ms. Carton, can you think of, I, I probably missed, like, it, it could be your roommate, it could be your, your student leader, your proctor who went through the same thing and is there for you as well. I was gonna mention the proctors, right? I mean, we have, so um, in, in each dorm, there are gonna be proctors who live there. Those are seniors who have been um, here, been at Hebron before, who um, have proven themselves to be leaders, who have been selected from within the community by, by um, decision of a committee with, in, that's informed by student vote and faculty vote. So these are like real student leaders in our committee that live in the dorms. And one of their responsibilities is, is, to, is to really help um, everybody uh, acclimate to life in Hebron to make sure that the residential experience is as positive as possible throughout the year. Um, and they're trained in peer support um, at the beginning of the year so that they're ready to jump in and say, they'll notice actually, they'll say like, you know what, that that's Mr. Hensley, I think, you know, John over there is looking a little homesick. I'm going to go check in with him um, and, and communicate back. Right. Um, and so our proctors are really attuned to that. And if for some reason you're, you're, no one's noticing, please reach out for help because there are lots of people here to support you. We've got great counseling staff, um, all sorts of people. And my, my, my biggest piece of advice, if you're feeling homesick is dive in, do get involved in things because when you get busy, you realize everything that the, that, where you are has to offer and you don't focus on on what you might be missing at home it's a great question um and i would add that uh advisor assignments will be shared with students around the same time that roommate assignments are shared so probably about a week before school um Ms. Uh, Karn, i think there are a few questions about dress code which is which is always kind of tricky but i think we can we can kind of give the the top four yeah. Uh, advice for in terms of dress code. Dress code. So my number one rule with dress code is you want to project an image that uh, that tells other people that you respect yourself and you respect everybody around you. So what that means can it can mean a lot of different things, right? So we ask that during the school day, students should wear clothes that are whole free, that don't have inappropriate images or slogans or anything like that on them. We ask that um, students either wear a nice blouse um, or a collared shirt or something a little bit dressier than a t-shirt to school. We also ask that students wear something a little bit dressier than jeans to school. So that could be corduroys, it could be chinos, khakis. Um, if you have dark colored jeans that look like they might be slacks, that's, we'll let you get away with that too. But we want people to look presentable, but also be able to express who they are. Right. Um, we ask that we can't. We ask. We don't want to see anybody's underwear of any type during the school day, or frankly, on the weekends either. Um, uh, and we do ask that during the school day, you're making sure you're wearing closed-toed shoes, so that if there's any emergency for any reason, uh, it's also important for science classes. Very important for science classes, or or anything you might do outdoors. And a lot of our classes do go outdoors uh, spontaneously. So being ready by wearing comfortable closed-toed shoes is a good idea. On the weekends and in the evenings, things are a bit more relaxed. But we still do ask that when you're in public spaces like the dining hall or uh, um, an activity that we that you're not wearing pajamas, right? That you're wearing something a little bit more community oriented. So Miss Carton, Miss Carton, uh, <laughs> can I wear tennis shoes to class if they are in good repair, if they're, if they're clean. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's say that I just went on a hike yesterday mm -hmm. in those tennis shoes. Should I wear those to class? Are they still muddy and dirty? They're still muddy and dirty. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm a big fan of fresh shoes. I mean, I will say absolutely. <laughs> for, for swag level, I will say no. Uh, what about shorts? Can we wear shorts? 
So you can wear shorts, um, but we ask that they are of an appropriate length. And I, we could get into so many conversations about what is appropriate and what isn't. Um, and it is sort of a gray area. But again, I want to come back to that guiding principle that you're projecting respect for yourself and for others. And so thinking about what the comfort level of those around you might be. Um, so we don't want to see anybody's rear end. Um, but so keep them a little bit longer than that, please. Um, but shorts are, are okay during warm weather. Mr. Hensley, I think there's a great question here. You self-proclaim yourself as a, a quite a video game guy. You know, you kind of challenge some people at FIFA. You know, oh, I, I, heard, I heard a little bit of smart talk, which is hilarious. You know, I, like I say, I've been playing FIFA since FIFA one. So, um, been a long time. Can kids bring their own video game console? Is that, that is a question in the q &A. So yes, you can bring it, but, uh, so you're, you're allowed to bring a video game console. Um, however, uh, junior division students, the same kinds of electronic restrictions that we talked about uh, before, turning things in nightly, are gonna apply. Uh, so a video game system can't remain in the room. And that's going to include a, a desktop computer uh, because these days, most ac all academic work is happening on a laptop. So uh, if you bring a desktop computer, we are going to consider that a video gaming device. Uh, and, and so those kinds of electronics and things like that for junior division students are going to need to get turned in nightly on the weeknights. Uh, and then... For senior division students, the same principles apply in terms of supports. So if, a, if, we, if we notice that a student is not getting to sleep because they're playing video games, we are very readily, we're going to have that conversation with that student about the role that video games are playing in their life. And, they, and if they need support in managing that, we are gonna provide that support. Uh, and, and we might be looking at something where a, a student is turning in, in their electronics, including their video game devices. But one of the th great things I think that we just touched on about video games is they, they can also be very communal. So we do have some um, game consoles that the school actually has uh, and has out in common spaces. Um, these are common rooms where students can get together at appropriate times and enjoy themselves. Because I think we all enjoy, and we all will enjoy seeing whether Mr. Nunez or I, or one of you, are better at FIFA. Easy. Or maybe it's Super Smash I'm Brothers. I'm holding the Easy. Got that last Easy. I mean, come on, guys. Please do it the Q&A and vote for me right now. All right? That's <laughs> uh -huh. the only thing I ask for. Yeah, you probably just play a pace game. <laughs> but no, I think to Mr. Hensley's point, point is... Um, we are also a community of trust, you know? You, you have some responsibilities, right? If, if you're not doing so well in classes, well, your privilege to have a video game might not be the best idea, right? And that's something where we trust you, but, but there are expectations as well. And, and like at home, I'm sure your parents have those kind of rules as well. So... Hebrew Academy, Hebrew Academy is in many ways a, a family with, with those kind of values. There are a few quick questions in here that I'm going to just sort of roll through, if that's okay. Um, there was a question earlier on that I missed around healthy options for athletes. Yes. Um, Sage does a really great job. Sage Dining, who, who, who does our dining services, does a really great job of labeling foods um, so you know, A, if they have any allergens in them. Um, B, it, um, sort of when uh, or um, how healthy the item is. Now, uh, th by that, I mean they have like this green light, red light system that helps students who might not be as familiar with nutritional content around things to, to help choose the healthiest foods if that's um, their goal. We also provide a lot of nutrition education in our health classes and in the residential setting. Yes, there are always healthy options. There are always vegetarian options, there are always vegan options. Um, yes. Um, there was a question around things that you're not allowed to bring with you. Um, we mentioned gaming systems if you're a junior division student, meaning sixth through ninth grade. Um, don't bring 
weapons, don't bring, don't bring uh, anything that produces fire, right? Uh, dorms, uh, communal living settings, we have to be really strict around fire, so candles shouldn't be in your room. Um, any devices that are, are likely to, are, that are more, more likely to cause fires, we also have to limit. Things like, um, you can't have a microwave in your room, we do have microwaves in the dorms. You can't have a, a mini fridge in your room unless you have specific dietary needs, in which case you should talk to us and we can coordinate that, but we do also have fridges in the communal fridges in the dorms. Um, you shouldn't bring, um, uh, oh gosh, I just said something else and I you, forgot. You should not keep your own hot pot or rice cooker no. or, or other appliances. If it generates a lot of heat, like a space heater, that becomes a fire risk and it also puts a lot of strain on the electrical systems in the building. So we have special infrastructure built in and those things available for you to use in a communal setting. Also heartbreaking, but don't bring your pets. Um, you can bring a plenty. fish in a little bowl. <laughs> yes, and if you are gonna miss a, a your dog. A non-lethal fish. A non-lethal fish. <laughs> no poisonous <laughs> fish, please. If you're gonna miss your dog, your cat, I promise you a lot of uh, the faculty and staff on campus, we have plenty of, of pets that we are more than happy to, to have you play with them and you know, take my dog, please, you know, whenever you want to. But, um, but dog, no, no, no pets in terms of like dogs or, or cats and things like that. The other thing I would say not to bring is don't bring over the counter medicine or, um, or uh, supplements um, and keep them in your room. If you, if there's specific medicines you like, um, even like not even if they're non-prescription medicines that you want to bring with you, you can, but you do need to keep them in the health center. Um, we have plenty of over-the-counter medicines. If you have a headache, if you have the flu or whatever, we can take care of you, but we, we can't have students keeping any sort of medicines in their rooms. Um, with a few small exceptions, I think like um, uh, some vitamins can be kept in your room and we can, we can work on that with, um, with the health center if you have specific. Yeah. And Scarn, um, people have been uh, using uh, sh shipping services to, mm -hmm. to send some stuff to, to Hebron already. Is there a way for them to check that it has arrived? Is there a way for them to, to connect with you and be like, yeah, we send these packages. Um, we just want to make sure they arrive on campus. Yeah, so I'd say number one, if it was something that was tracked, you can always use the tracking service as a, as a place to start. But if there's something that you're really concerned, has it arrived? I'm not sure if it's arrived. Um, please reach out to me or Mr. Hensley and we can uh, coordinate with the business office to check. Um, I uh, confirmed a package earlier today. Um, yes, absolutely. And, and we will do our best to get all of those packages up to your rooms before you even arrive so they're ready for you. And believe me, based on the business office, I was there today, there are a lot of packages arriving. So, uh, so it's working. It's working. And if you want to send something to yourself or to your student in advance of their arrival or throughout the year, the mailing address, and Mr. Nunez, you want to put this in the yep, uh, chat? Sure is 339 Paris Road in Hebron, Maine. It's the same mailing address for everyone, but be sure to put your student's name on the package. The number of packages we get each year that we go, oh man, it was just sent to nobody. Um, it's not as, not as helpful, so make sure to put the name on. Um, let's see. Um, Andrea, there is a pool table, a table tennis table, a foosball table, and a number of other such things spread throughout the campus in various spaces. So you will get to know where those are once you've, once you've arrived. Absolutely. Somebody had a great question about the countries represented. Oh, yeah. uh, and I mean, it's kind of hard to name the 26 countries because I am not the best at rapping, but um, we have a lot. I mean, we have kids from, from Norway to Somalia to, you know, we have kids from Israel coming, we have kids from Turkey, we have kids from Mexico, we have kids from Sweden and Germany and Djibouti. Um, so is, we have, you know, kids from Canada and, and kids from, from, from 18 states in the US. So it's quite the unique um, community in a way, you know, you, this is, this is a privilege in many ways. Uh, that sometimes we take for granted, you know, when, when you have the opportunity in your life to be 
with 26 countries around you uh, and to be able to meet people from different cultures and to expand your horizons and your thoughts and to challenge yourself is, is truly fascinating. There was a question about holidays and vacations and what happens over those. Um, so there are some really short holidays. Sometimes we, we have a couple three-day weekends throughout the year. During those uh, holidays, most students do stay on campus, but if they want to go home, they're welcome to. Um, for longer holidays, our first one is the Thanksgiving break. Uh, uh, most students do choose to go home, but this year, given the fact that travel might be difficult for some students, we are keeping campus open for students who would like to stay on campus. Um, uh, Mr. Nunez, do you have the link to the sign-up form that you could include? Um, there is a sign-up form. We do need to know numbers fairly soon. So if you think you're, you're going to want to stay on campus over Thanksgiving break, please fill out this form within the next two, three weeks, please, uh, by the end of this month. Um, and that will allow us to plan appropriately. And, and, and during that Thanksgiving break, we'll offer trips off campus, but it'll be sort of, it'll be relaxed. I will, I will put that link in a, in, in a little bit, but that's another reminder to everybody that we have here to always check, check Hebron Awaits and read it through because it's very important. So this Friday, guys, I want to see everybody opening it uh, and making sure that you go through it. Yeah, we would just hate for you to miss something that, that is, impor you know, is important to you. Um, but for the other two breaks, uh, campus is closed. Uh, so for winter break and for spring break, that said, spring break, we're going to be launching our global classroom, which is very exciting. So there will be some, some trips, more information uh, coming on that later. Those will come at an additional fee. They'll be an application basis, um, and they're totally voluntary, um, but they'd be pretty exciting and international. Um, there was a question, another question, a dress code question around leggings, um, and I am, I feel that question because I love wearing leggings. Um, this is sort of one of those gray areas, so we generally say leggings are okay as long as we can't, we're not looking at anybody's butt. If that, sorry, that's not a very delicate way of putting it, but with a long shirt, with a dress, leggings are great, um, but with like a crop top, not so much. Um, do I need to take a specific computer? Uh, no, uh, our, it's a B, we have a, what's called a BYOD program, bring your own device. If you are in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, we do have a, uh, loaner Chromebook for you, but you're also welcome to use your own computer. But if you're in the ninth grade and up, students do bring their own computers. I'm trying to see what else. Um, Student union, how does that work? Should I answer that one? I think that, that I might be the best person to answer that one. There's a question around the student union. So the student union is sort of like a little student cafe on campus. There's a little store in there that you can buy Hebron swag, like your favorite Hebron sweatshirt or Yeti mug or whatever makes you happy. Um, but then they also sell all sorts of snacks. You know, some of your sort of typical snacky comfort foods, but they also try to stack, stock snacks from around the world, which is really fun. Um, and it's also a really great hangout spot. So there's a pool table down there. There's a, there's a, a ping pong table down there. There are TVs and, and places to, to sort of like just lounge areas to hang out. Um, the student union is open um, uh, during, it's actually open during the school days um, in, and until around dinner time. Um, and it's open on the weekends, but because of how busy your day is during the, the weekdays, you, you likely would only be able to go during the free period or maybe drop by right before practice to pick up an extra Gatorade or something like that. On the weekends, there's lots of time to hang out with friends in there. Um, and that is a student union. You can pay for the pay for, for items at the student union using cash, or you can use your student account. So every student has a student account. Is there a pool? Um, Edwin, you want to answer that one? Yeah, um, <laughs> there is not a, you know, one of, we have so many different sports at Hebron. We, unfor we unfortunately do not have a swimming uh, team. So there, there are many areas to this question. We, we had a pool back in the day. So there is a pool on campus, but it has been taken by the arts. So, you know, I think it's more like uh, a cool potential gallery space and graffiti area um but bring right. your swim trunks do do yeah we do have a lake on campus which is even better uh so you will get to do kayaking and canoeing 
Um, and there will be opportunities throughout the year where um, we will go to a potential swimming spot like the beach, uh, surfing, things like that. So bring your swimming um, equipment um, and don't forget to also, if you have any equipment that you need to bring on that note, um, like in terms of athletics, like golf or things like that, please bring it as well. Like we, were, we discussed at the beginning, we have storage space. So don't worry about that. And if you have any questions about athletic equipment that you want to bring, uh, reach out to any of us and we'll connect you with Mr. Brooks, who's our athletic director. Um, and he's great at helping to, to troubleshoot. If you're a mountain biker, for example, and need to bring, maybe you need to buy a bike, but you don't know what to buy, he might be able to help you. Speaking of things to bring, somebody said, can I bring my skateboard? Please do. Um, Please don't forget the helmet. Just don't <laughs> forget the helmet. Exactly. And, and do not grind on the handrails at school. <laughs> um, is, the maintenance department doesn't want to repair the paint. Um, uh, is there an official school calendar? There is an official school calendar. Mr. News, do you have the link there? Post, posting it right now. I'm on, I'm on top of things today. I really am showing my bell self. Just like that, boom. Just like but that. Do they need a safety box for passports and money? That's also a great question. So. Um, Mr. Hensley mentioned that every student gets a desk. Every desk has one drawer that has a, a, that is lockable. You would need to provide your own um, um, like padlock, um, and you can order those online or buy those when we go out on, on shopping trips or bring one with you. Um, and you can keep things in there. That said, passports should be kept with the dean of residential life with Mr. Hensley. Um, uh, I know that some students sometimes feel uneasy, you know, you're trained when you're given your passport, like never let this out of your sight, but trust me, it is in your best interest that we hold on to your passport every year, uh, not every year, but it's not uncommon for students to say, no, 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 I really want to hold on to my passport and then lose it and it becomes a nightmare when they need to travel home. So please, we will we'll collect your passport. And I-20s. And I-20s. Um, and then when it comes to money, my recommendation is don't keep a lot of money in your room. Um, there's really very little need for cash. Um, I would say that if you have, if uh, you have access to like a, a family credit card or something and you want to keep that on you, obviously that's great and you can use that when you go out on trips. Um, but, but anything you would want to purchase on campus, you can purchase using your student account um, and that is cashless and people can't, um, you know, access it, it's just yours. Um, so my recommendation is don't bring a lot of mud cash. Um, do bring your passport and I-20. We'll collect your passport and I-20 and any money you have, um, if you do travel with some cash, we, we suggest that you um, deposit it in your, in, in your student account and we can show you how to do that. Um, so Ms. Carton, the weekend's coming up and, and uh, I know I've signed up for a shopping trip and I want to access some of that cash. How do I do that? Absolutely. Can I? If it's in my student account? Absolutely. So we'll show you exactly how to do that when you get to campus. But basically, you'll walk over to the business office and you'll talk to Ms. McAllister and you say, Ms. McAllister, I'm looking to take some money out of my account. And she'll look at your account. And she'll go, great. You've got plenty of funds. How much would you like? You'd say, I'm going on a trip this weekend. I'd like to take out $40. You'll sign a little receipt and you get your cash. It's very easy. And, and I'll tell a very short story from my years of working in boarding schools. <laughs> Uh, but uh, cleaning out the dorms at the end of the year, I have found large sums of cash before from students who didn't take advice to store cash and they forgot it or they left it behind or they, they stored it in the pocket of a jacket and hung it in their closet because they thought that would be a safe place to keep it and they outgrew the jacket and then they tossed it in the donation pile at the end of the year rather than taking it home. And uh, I, have, I have returned thousands of dollars to students that way at the end of, year, of school years. And you don't want to be that student who forgets the money that they have or loses the money that they have, uh, who then we miss it. Because I'm sure for every bit that I found, something was missed. Um, so I, I can't stress enough how important it is don't keep a lot of cash in your room, even if you want to keep it safe. I understand, and it makes sense sometimes internationally when you're traveling to come with cash, but deposit it 
as soon as you get here, it's the safest thing uh, for you and for your funds. And I, I just want to remind everybody who is an international student who is watching this, you have to travel with your I-20. You have to bring the I-20 with you. The I-20 is as important as the passport. They go together, all right? They never, they never apart. So please remember that. And when you come to campus, we will keep your passport and I-20 safe so that you don't have to worry about that. If you don't already, get a nice pouch. Just keep it all in one pouch together. So Mr. Hensley, Mr. Nunez, I'm noticing we're already at the hour mark and I um, and we've got tons and tons of questions. I don't know that I'm gonna, we're gonna be able to answer all of these. Um, uh, are there any that stand out to you guys that we can can we that we can knock off, or some that we can tell people hang tight? We'll 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 answer those soon. Yeah, there's 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 one in particular with this I twenty. Your I twenty is not your student visa. The student visa is in your passport. The I twenty is the little document that was sent to you by the admissions office that you had to bring to the embassy to get the visa. You need to get your passport and your I twenty. So Ms. Carton, I think there have been um, naturally a number of questions around COVID policies. When are we gonna know more? What do we know? Yeah, absolutely. So we are very hopeful and optimistic that this year is going to be as close to normal as possible. Um, do travel with masks because in general, um, we wanna have masks around. Uh, even if we end up not masking on campus, um, we, we, you wanna be able to, to wear masks when you go into to crowded spaces and obviously you need to, to wear them when you travel. Um, in terms of COVID policies overall, I think everybody's been following the news. This is a changing landscape with the Delta variant and all of that. As I mentioned, we're optimistic. We're gonna be able to keep things as close to normal as possible, but we are, we're not trying to keep you guys in the dark. We just do wanna make sure that we have, that we're giving you the right information. So we're, we're in the process of fine tuning those policies with a number of experts through the CDC and, and other sources um, to make sure that we are in a position to be safe and also to have a lot of fun. Um, um, but uh, stay tuned. We should have more information on that fairly yeah, soon. And, and on that note, I think that to remind everybody that to be in contact with our health services, as you know, we are mandating vaccines. Um, and that's part of the reason why we want to go back to normalcy. And the easiest way or to a sense of normalcy, I think the easiest way to do that is through being a, 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 a a community that is fully vaccinated of everybody. And that's the first step. So if, if you haven't done so, but I seriously doubt it, um, please be in contact with the health services and make sure that you are connecting with them, with DEP, uh, about your, your vaccine, your vaccinations, your timing, things like that. I'm wondering if this might be a good place to wrap things up. I know there are a ton of questions that have that we didn't get to, and I'm so sorry, but these are great questions. Some of them, I mean, quick things. Can you can you wear a bikini when swimming? Sure. Can you bring a record player? Absolutely. Um, book lists. Your teachers will provide uh, lists of books to, to order when you get here. Please wait because your class schedule might change, and they'll make sure to provide any reading material you need at the beginning um, in printed form. Can we go see NFL and NBA games? I hope so. I, I would have fun. We've offered those in the past. and Let's talk about it. Yeah. I love it. It depends. It depends on who is playing. I am yeah. really, I'm really opinionated about that. But uh, I think that one thing to do is for, for all three of us to, to send our email in the chat. And guys, if, if there wasn't uh, a question, uh, if there was a question that wasn't answered, feel free to reach out to us. And, and we can schedule a Zoom, we can, we can say hi to each other, we can talk about everything. So, um, so that your, if, if your question wasn't answered, we want to make sure that um, you can get to us. And as always, it's, it's a pleasure to have these webinars. Um, next Wednesday, Wednesday we'll be here again. So in the meantime, please read the Hebron Awaits Please make sure that you go through it. Uh, and guys, I'm so excited. We will see each other very, very soon. At this point, it feels like a countdown. Um, we're getting 
all kinds of things ready for for the arrival of our students and you know this is this is the fun part you know i actually you know i i i get kind of lonely in the summer so i think that i'm looking forward to to having everybody on campus in what less than a month almost you know less than a month this so thank you guys for being here miss carden mr hansley amazing as always so thank you so much guys thank you everyone have a great night everybody Great to see you all.